Well, good morning. Oh, very good. And welcome to the 2018 FLC National Conference. Um, we are in Philadelphia, as you know. And just as a quick scan and, and getting you involved in the uh, discussion, how many of you, this is the first time to Philadelphia? Well, that's quite a few. Um, did you have an opportunity last night to go out and get a chance to, to see the city a little bit? At all? I know we did the reception, and uh, it had been a late for me because I was in bed by 9. Uh, but hopefully most of you guys have, live, live a, a little bit fancier life than me for that. So we are in Philadelphia. And as we prepared for this conference, it was very interesting to get to know a little bit about this city. And did you know all these things? Did you know that this was, a, and this is the one I did know. This was the first national capital, right? We kind of seen that through all the, uh, the talk about the early parts of our country. But did you know all these other firsts that Philadelphia represents for us? Medical school, university, hospital, library, post office, first business school, uh, stock exchange, newspaper, art museum, art school, so bringing in the culture as well as the other pieces, the zoo, Thanksgiving Day Parade. How many of you knew that this was the home of the first Thanksgiving Day Parade? Anyone? Not a single hand. Oh, no, no, Mark, but he's a resident. He lives across the river in New Jersey, right? <laughs> Doesn't count. Um, but also the first computer, electronic computer, and even the first naval shipyard. So these were, you think about the early, really the early nation, and you think about the significance of a place that that's the first for our nation and all these things. That's, that's pretty remarkable, right? It's kind of that, you could almost go so far as to talk about innovation there what it takes to, to really break through the norm and, and establish brand new things. And that's why we kind of celebrate innovation, right? So this is actually my first, and I'm John DeMint. I, I didn't say my name very well, but this is my first FLC um, position as the chair. Yeah, first position as the chair, but first conference, right? And what I did when I, when I got the chair was I wanted to go back to the statutory authority and, and really soak in what it is we're supposed to do as an organization. And the cool thing about the FLC is it's not the FLC, it's the FLC, right? We're all part of it. You're either a volunteer or you're, you're, you're part of it in the services that we provide. And in the statutory authority, 15 U.S.C. 3710E, there's really 11 items identified that the FLC is supposed to do. And you boil those down, and it comes down to these three verbs, this promote, educate, and facilitate. That's what we do. We're not typically on the front end of, of identifying the, the assets that's available to put back in the economy, and we're not at the back end with the deals necessarily, but we kind of support the middle piece with the labs, the agencies, and even the, the end customer, the, the private sector. But this is what we do, and it's good for us to know that because sometimes we want to make more of the FLC than what we've been mandated. So we really try to be focused. Now, this is our customer set. The other part was learning what we're supposed to do. The other, the other part was, who are we supposed to do it with and for? And it really boils down to these three customer, stakeholder, or client sets. And the first one's the member labs, which there's a little over 300, 300 plus, just depending on how you count them. Right? That's the bulk of, of who FLC tends to serve. And of those 11 mandates, seven of those really hit the labs. Then you get over to the left where it says state and local government and the private sector, and when you look at the authority, it almost always says state and local government, then it's followed by institutions, not-for-profits, educational institutions, but it's really the non-federal sector, right? It's that economy aspect that we're trying to, to, to engage with tech transfer, because if you remember, the whole purpose of federal tech transfer is really one thing. How do we make the results of federal R&D valuable back to the economy? How do we take it from the labs and put it back into the, to the uh, to the economic system, the ecosystem, if you will. So the state and local government and private sector, um, five of the uh, mandatory 11 really call them out. And there's the agencies. And the agencies obviously are very closely linked with the labs. And three of those statutory authorities really point back to the agency. So this is who we serve. And, and when I say that, again, you're not just the customers, you're also part of the FLC, right? We're all members of that. So some of the ways that FLC works on that is through these platforms for success. And these, these have really become how we deliver services. And it's not all inclusive in these three, by any means. But that, the T2 toolkit, and hopefully some of you saw the booth out there that's right outside the Millennial Room where we've been eating. 
and Michael Lacombe mans that. Um, that really is the place where all the tools and information starts to become accessible. And if you haven't been to federallabs.org, it's really impressive, and there's not too much there that, that well, I, I would say that differently. Pretty much everything you need is there. So everything that I get asked for is a regular basis as I travel to DC and to the different agencies. Every time, it's almost always there, whether it's awards, success stories, what are the labs, where are the information about the points of contacts, whatever it is, federallabs.org is a wealth of, of information. <clears throat> now, one thing I want to jump to here is this. How many of you have already downloaded the app? Okay, so the app is a wonderful thing, and I ask that you go ahead and do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, what you'll find on there is it has an attendance list, so you can see everybody that's here for the most part, and a lot of us even have headshots. So it's very helpful to identify who you're working with in networking, because that's one of the best parts of the national meeting. The other part is we're using this for some of the surveys and the polling. Some of the venues this today and tomorrow actually have places where you can actually put input back. And that becomes very important because one of the big things that we've tried to do this year is, is institute more surveying. And the whole thing is to reach out to the labs, the agencies, and the, to the non-private or the, the non-public sector and really get an idea of what the needs and wants are because we really need that feedback loop as we continue to evolve FLC. Now with that said, I want to talk a little bit about your agenda that's in your booklet. And while there's Every one of the venues are good. They were all intentionally selected. Um, there's three things that I really want to bring to your attention that I think are the mega drivers, the macro things that are driving our community and also FLC. Two of them are external and one of them's internal. And, and I'm going to start at the back of the agenda and work forward. And so at 3.15 tomorrow, doc, Dr. Walter Copan, who is the uh, Undersecretary of Commerce and the NIST Director, will be speaking. And, and Dr. Copan is one of us. He is a tech transfer practitioner from the Department of Energy. He's also been in the private sector and I believe even in the university. And so he is a, a guy that understands us because he's one of us. And if you're not familiar with what he's doing with the Return on Investment Initiative, the ROI, you really need to make sure you're there at his talk tomorrow. Because I think it's going to be an inflection point for our community. I think it's a pivot point going up and to the right for what we do as a community. What he wants to do, because he's lived this, he wants to go back and look at the legislation. He wants to go back and look at how we do business, because he knows we can do more and do better. Now that could be rewriting laws, or it could be working with the agencies and potentially uh, reducing some of the uh, 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 bureaucracy, if you will, and to some degree actually um, how do we push delegation down, which is what most of us would say. I, I was in a class yesterday, and as we talked about the authorities, my end is I think we got all the authorities just about, as far as I know that we need, if I could just exercise them, right? And so that would be a great start. Now with that said, that's, that's the one mega driver on us, is how is he going to change the landscape? And it's not just him. What's interesting is he's, it's, he's also got the White House involved because it's one of the presidential's cross-agency performance goals, number 14 literally says technology transfer. And, and we may have seen some of this in the past, but this one still feels a little different to me. He also had uh, uh, OMB at, at a launch event last week. And so he had the deputy director of OMB. He had the White House as what I would call it the CTO. And you had all three of these people, plus the Secretary of Commerce, talking about the importance of tech transfer from the federal labs. Um, I've only been around 11 years, but I've not seen it at that level. So I'm very optimistic, and, and I think this is that inflection point. So it's gonna be driving us coming from above and from the DC area. And then today at 1.30, Mark Snyderman, who is the uh, uh, CEO of the uh, support organization that, that, that supports FLC, he's gonna be talking about tools, the toolkit. And this session is there because he gave this talk at two of the regional meetings last fall. And those regions have come back and said, this was amazing. We did not know we had this at our, at our fingertips within the FLC, these tools, this information. So Mark is going to walk you through that. And that'll actually be a chance where you can use the app to poll and help give input of what's important and what you use. Um, and of course, surveys for the, for the national meeting that you'll be getting after the event is something we really treasure and we look at. Um, 
Then lastly, one of the other mega trends that's really driving our community is one that's been around for about 20 years, I think, and maybe it's been longer than that, but starting to get formalized in that time frame, and then really started hitting its stride about 10 years ago. And I'm talking about technology-based or innovation-based economic development. And this has become more or less the groundswell around many of the labs. Many of you already have that happening around your lab, and you're already engaging. Some of you are very much on the infancy of that, where there hasn't been that critical mass built yet. You got all the pieces, and you're waiting for someone to stitch it together to be this, this kind of ecosystem that we all want and dream about that helps the lab do its mission, but also helps pull things out of the lab as well. And so this tech-based economic development, or TBED, is actually the keynote with Jason Rittenberg. And so he's gonna give you, uh, I guess enlighten you, uh, help you understand what this community is, because if you're like me, I was not that familiar with it, but once I became familiar, I saw it as such an incredible, incredible key partnership for going forward. Now I say that because I started going to their conferences, and their next conference is at the first week in December in Salt Lake City. This is SSTI. And if you have any interest in the ecosystem and tech-based economic development, and this is at the state and local government level, this is at the um, economic development and even university outreach, these are the people that come there. They're the practitioners. They're kind of like the FLC uh, for that TBED community. The best conference I've been to the last five years has been SSTI. Now there's some flyers out there as well. And one thing I'll, I'll leave on before I introduce Jason is,